Hey everyone, this is Troy. First of all, let me say thank you very much for coming back and attending the advanced webinar. So I'm hoping you found a lot of value in the, the first webinar that we went through and I'm hoping you can find even more value in this advanced version here to show you really all the amazing things that you can do with your stack software. So here we're just looking at my intro slide. I know we covered that in the first session, so I don't want to spend a, a whole lot of time on that. but. For the agenda today, we are going to cover uh, takeoff libraries so we can reuse those takeoffs. Uh, label groups to group our data, label libraries so we only have to create those once, bookmarks or hyperlinks, and company settings. So again, we've got a full agenda here, so let me jump right in and get going. First thing that we want to cover is our takeoff templates here. So we covered these in the original section on how to create these and how to create these for the different measurement types. but one of the key is you know the, the more you use the software the, the quicker it's going to quicker and it's going to get for you and, and here's a great example of that so once you create these takeoff templates you really only have to create them once and then you can just use them over and over again for all your future projects for example say our our vinyl here um, say that we do flooring and we're going to use this a lot what we can do is click on this little icon again to get to our sub menu here and now we can add that to our library we'll get a little bar up there that it was successfully saved and that is great and now that is available for us for future use what that puts it is in this little library tab so over here this will show all the different takeoff templates that i have saved over the years and right down there is the vinyl looks like i've got a couple of them but here is the vinyl we just saved so what's really cool about this is when you open a new project your project tab will be empty which is fine you can go right over to your library um, tab so let's take a look at that if we hop back out to the bid calendar i just uploaded this project we can hop into a plan page and let's just kind of zoom in here really quick so as i can see my project tab is empty but that's okay because i've got plenty of things over here in my library that i've used i can go up here and i can even search and find that vinyl that we had saved over so I just type in the first three letters it's going to find that all i'm going to do is just click on this little green arrow and then immediately start to draw so there's no creation over and over again. When I hit done, I'm gonna see that that actually brought that over to my project tab. So you can just continue to work from your library. I could go over here and grab all these different type of measurements that I was going to do, hit the little green arrow, immediately start to draw, and then the software is gonna pull that over into the project for you. Again, it'll save you a lot of time if you're using the same type of uh, takeoffs and, you know, over and over again. No sense uh, retyping those every single time. The really cool thing that you can do here is also do your color coding. So if I want this vinyl to always be this purple color, you now I want to create some consistency in my takeoffs going forward so that I can look at the plan and I know that that is my vinyl. It's, when it's saved in the library, it's going to remember your color coordination. So that kind of helps you create some consistency going forward. You can also modify things in your library. So if I click on my library tab, if you want to get rid of something in your library, Again, just like on the project tab, we're gonna click on the little icon here to get to the submenu. Um, from the edit menu, I could change the color or the name, or I could just delete it out altogether. And it's gonna remove it from my library. Not gonna affect any of your past projects whatsoever. Um, the library is about current and moving forward. So deleting here isn't gonna hurt anything. You're welcome to clean that up at any time. Awesome, so take off template library, a great way to save some time and get some consistency going forward. Let's hop back into our training project and let's look at label groups. So we use label groups to group our data in the report section. And in our last session, so I show you quickly how we could go to reports. Right here, I've done some takeoffs here for just, um, example and i showed you we could go into the built-in grouping where it's going to group by plan name but we can create the groupings that we want to group by using the word group a lot 
Um, but say that we want to know different units or, or buildings or, or floors or, or room numbers, we can really sort almost any way that you can imagine with the software. Let's go back into takeoff here. You can also do your groupings before or after the drawings. And I'm going to show you both ways uh, depending on, on which workflow you, you like the best. So if I go into plan 251, I've done some takeoffs here real quickly on plan A, plan B, and plan C. So say that I want to be able to, to sort my data or group my data by those units in my report section. This is how we're going to do it. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Now project labels, they are at the project level. So I'm just going to click on any one of these just to access the section. So if I click on here to activate that takeoff, it's going to take me into the library section. Here it's going to say that we have no labels found just because I haven't created one yet. So let's create one really quick and we are going to group by unit here so we can group our plan a plan b and plan c so let's create a label group the label group name think of it as kind of your folder so in this case we're wanting to group by unit. so our unit would be our name and then next we're going to create our drop down menus to be able to assign those measurements so we'll do plan a plan B and plan C real quick. Okay, now these are created, our takeoffs are done. All we need to do is just connect the two of them. I'm gonna go over here to multi-select. I'm gonna draw a rectangle around plan A and say, you know what, we're gonna assign that to plan A and end to save that. Grab plan B assign it to plan B and lastly we will grab plan C and assign it to that label group all right so now if we hop back into the report section to see what we've done again when we click on a report it's going to show it the project in its entire entirety but we can go by our unit now so now it's going to to group our information here are all the measurements associated with uh, plan A the ones associated with plan B and the ones associated with plan C. So it's a really awesome thing um, to be able to group your data and see it exactly how you want it. So that was an example of how you can do it after the fact. So, and that works really well if you're working with, you know, multiple measurement types on different units like these, you know, go ahead and complete your takeoff completely and then just multi-select and you can group all those different takeoffs together at one time. But we can also do it before. So let's kind of delete this out just to kind of give a clean slate so I don't confuse anybody. And let's get rid of our little unit one. And let's hop into a different plan. So let's say that we want to group our data uh, by building one and building two right here. So here's our little shingle roof. I'm going to click on activate. Again, it's going to say no labels found basically because I just deleted those, but in a new project, you're going to see that. We're going to create a label group and we want to group by building. So we'll call our label group building. And then we'll do a drop down for building one. Oops. And building two. Okay, so now before we've drawn this, we can drop in and say, hey, this is going to be building one and I'll take this off quickly for time's sake. So it'll be a little bit messy here. And then drop this down and say, okay, now we're going to take off building two. There we go. Hop into our report section. Again, we're looking at our, our project in its entirety, but I can now group by building. So now we've got our measurements for building A or building one and building two, just like that. Okay. Lots of things you can group by, like I said, room 101, room 102, room 103, you could do phase one, phase two, phase three, you know, it's really unlimited with how you want to do this. Um, you could either break it down by pipe. So you could have a takeoff template here that says pipe. And you could do a label group for like copper, for PVC, for galvanized. Um, 
So really, you can get creative as you want with the label groups. Another thing, if you're going to use the same type of label group over and over again for future projects, so remember how we save these takeoff templates so we could reuse those in our library? Well, we can also do the same for our label groups. To do so, we're gonna go up here to company settings, so this little person icon up here, and we're gonna go into account. So under company settings, right here we have company level label group. So you would create them here, and then you're just gonna pull them into your project as needed, okay? So you can see that there's some here, I've created ones for different elevations, or different floor, or ground level, or pipe. Um, so you can really be very creative, but let's add a group here, and let's call this room. And let's add that. And then we're gonna just create our label. So we can say, you know, room 101. We can say room 102 room 103 just like so and we're good to go hop back into our project and go back into let's go into this new auto zone one delete that little guy out and say that this is our room. So this is room 101. So when we go into our vinyl and click the little green arrow to activate it, again, it says no labels found, but now I can go one step over for our label group library. Click on here and then all the ones that I've created are available for me. So the one I just created for room, I'm just gonna hit the little plus and that's gonna bring it over into the project. And now that is available for me. So. If labels are going to be something that you're going to use over and over again, create them in company settings. Um, it'll save you a lot of time in the future. I can now say, you know what, I'm working with Rona 1 and go over and take off this space. Just like so, work away my round, look how sloppy that is, and do 102, 103 and keep working out. And then that will group everything in the report section. All right, next thing is bookmarks, or, or some people call them hyperlinks. So say that we are in a project here, and we wanna be able to quickly jump from one area to another. This is how we're gonna do so. So say that this notes section is something that we're interested in here. So, Pull that over and here's our, our narrow fixture layout, for example, and say that when we are in this plan, right over in this section, we want to have a little hyperlink that's going to zoom to that so that we can reference that note. So to build a bookmark, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start where we're going to end up. So if we want to end up here at this narrow fixture layout, this is where we're going to begin going to go up here to the little star figure and we're going to add a bookmark. We can give it a name, narrow fixture, and I'm going to hit submit. So now that that is created for us, now we're going to go back to where we want to zoom from and now we're going to place that little symbol. Go up here to place bookmark, we're going to grab that little select that one and just put our symbol right there. Okay, and now we are good to go. So I access this plan, I'm gonna click on it. It's gonna zoom me right into that location, just like so. Boom, and there we are. So it's a great quick reference to zoom out to different section views or call outs or anything that you need to reference quickly. Add these little bookmarks and it's gonna take you right there. If you need to delete one, this is a little tricky, so I am gonna show you. So if we clicked on this with our edit arrow, it's actually gonna zoom us to the page. Um, so you'll wanna use multi-select. Again, we're just gonna draw a little rectangle around that and delete that guy out. This is one I was playing with earlier. Um, so use multi-select. If not, it's gonna actually zoom you to the page. Lastly, let's go over to company settings. So we were touched on this a moment ago. So if I click on the little person icon, I can actually take a look at my stack account. 
lots of information here. So I can update my billing information. If you need to update your credit card, you can either look up your subscription. You can also see your billing history. If you're a pro customer, you can see what catalogs are attached to your account. Under the main company settings tab, you can update your company name if you want to. You can also, if you're going to always use metric, you know, if you're overseas or up in Canada, we can click on this little check mark there and that will always load the project into metric scales. This is where we created our, our company label groups. And then for our pro version where you can also add additional cost types. But great way here, if you need to update your credit card, you can do so right there on that tab. And let's hop back in the projects. So as a quick recap here, what we did today was learn how to save our takeoffs. Again, we're gonna click on this, go over to library. It's gonna save that into our library tab so that we don't have to create those moving forward. We can also do our color consistency for our projects going forward. We use label groups to be able to group our data. So building A, building B, building C, room 101, 102, 103, any kind of vari variation there. We typically group by location. Um, creating label groups in company settings up here so again you can use those over and over again for future projects and that's really what this advanced course is all about is how to save time you know with stack moving forward and so I'm kind of show you some of these shortcuts where you can just create them once and use them over and over again went over bookmarks about you know I like a hyperlink to quickly go to a call out or a section or a note section on a plan. And then also went over the company settings, which can be incredibly helpful as well. So I really hope that you are enjoying the software. If I've covered anything today that you'd like an individual session on, remember just give us a call right here or hop onto the chat button and schedule a one-on-one -on -one with either myself or my staff. We would be happy to review any of the, the topics that we've covered here today on a project that you are currently working on. So as always, we are here to ensure your success and I very much so appreciate your time today. Thank you.